Hey, this is James Arnold Taylor, voice actor, the voice of... Yeah, but dabba do, Fred Flintstone. Johnny Test, who's 11 years old and totally awesome. Ratchet from Ratchet and Clank. Titus from Final Fantasy X. Oh, yes, and of course, Obi-Wan Kenobi. It wouldn't be coffee with Kenobi without yours truly. The force is strong here indeed. Previously on Coffee with Kenobi. But, uh, you know, a week later, I came back to the stores and they were ready to be sold. And once again, not on the shelf. So I went to the guy and I was like, hey, bud, do you guys have this? And he's like, let me check in the back. He comes up in the back and he's like, is this you? I'm like, yeah, it is, man, it is. And he's like, <laughs> I was only kidding, but, but really, is that you? And I was like, no, it really is. And I showed him the pictures of, of me uh, with Star Wars gear. And, and he was like, oh, my goodness, this is so cool. He's like, I helped you find you. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> This is James Arnold Taylor, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi. Hmm, I have a good feeling about this. What a great conversation that was. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Coffee with Kenobi, show number 166. We are your spoiler-free place for Star Wars discussion, analysis, rhetoric, and the best travel tips this side of the galaxy. I'm your host, Dan Z, drinking One Nation Coffee, out of my Celebration Orlando 40th Anniversary Star Wars coffee mug. The 40th anniversary of Star Wars coincided with that exciting experience, and we are going to have a brand new celebration, of course, coming up April 11th to the 15th. Coffee with Kenobi will be with you every single step of the way to get you ready for that amazing convention experience. Whether you're going to Celebration or not, we want you to feel like you are a part of Celebration Chicago. Coffee with Kenobi will bring you there again every step of the way. And if you're debating on going to Celebration Chicago and are finalizing plans, be sure to go to MEI and Mouse Fan Travel. For all of your travel needs to Disney theme parks and the cruise lines, as well as anywhere you want to go on vacation, be sure to go to www.mousefantravel.com, the official travel agency of Coffee with Kenobi. On CWK, I invite you to join me as we think about the mythology of Star Wars in a whole new way and maybe laugh a little bit in the process. You are here with your Star Wars family as we go to our favorite coffee shop and talk Star Wars. On today's show, artist Joe Caroni discusses Celebration Chicago and what we can expect from the artists that will be there presenting their original Star Wars content for you. It is a great conversation you're going to love. Tom will be back to bring us the latest news and in a very quick and surprising turnaround, Mason Z is back to discuss Star Wars Episode 2 Attack of the Clones. So pull up a chair, grab your favorite coffee mug, and let's have some coffee with Kenobi. So who talks first? You talk first? I talk first. Hi, this is Joe Caroni, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi. Perfect. Perfect. All right. All right. Cool. Perfect. Well, let's, let's dive in. Okay, cool. Joining us today for a cup of coffee is Joe Caroni. You know him as a Star Wars artist, but that is not just the only thing joe creates in fact i was looking at your website joe earlier today and my goodness you are one busy guy welcome to coffee with kenobi hey thanks for having me and uh yeah yeah i'm pretty busy most times but uh thanks for taking the time to to talk to me and talk about star wars celebration coming up Oh my goodness, my absolute pleasure we are very very excited uh, as a show i mean we the show started uh, right before Celebration Anaheim, so this will be our third Celebration of Coffee with Kenobi. But you are also uh, quite the veteran of Star Wars Celebration Chicago. How how many celebrations will this be for you? Um, I've been to all of them. So, so Celebration has a 20-year history, so I've been to all of them except for the very first one in Denver, uh, which was back in 99 when The Phantom Menace, uh, right before The Phantom Menace premiered. And then... Sure. So I missed that one, and I didn't get to go to Japan, and that would have been 2008. So those were the only two celebrations um, I wasn't a part of. So. Wow. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I made a career doing Star Wars art um, for the last 20 years professionally. So um, to be a part of Celebration uh, every time, I felt really lucky. Um, you know, just to do Star Wars art for a living and to work with Lucasfilm and Disney on different projects has, has been oh, yeah. 
you know, that has been really cool. And I felt very fortunate. Oh, absolutely. Well, we are definitely fortunate because you are one of the um, most exciting artists out there in Star Wars for sure. And obviously Star Wars has had quite an impression on you as it has so many of us. So tell us if you would about your earliest memories of Star Wars, just getting involved or not even involved, but just as a fan, just finding this franchise for the first time. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was there at Ground Zero in 1977. I was about yeah. four years old when when A New Hope, but it was just called Star Wars back then uh, when it came out. So I saw it as a kid. It pretty much, you know, to see something like that at that impressionable of an age, I mean, it really just, changed my life right then and there. I mean, not that I had any direction at that point, but Star Wars pretty much consumed me just like it did every kid of the late seventies and the early eighties with, you know, the movies and the toys and just seeing the first Star Wars film and just inspiring my imagination to want to create and draw and, and color and paint pictures and, you know, then the following, that following year, the action figures were released by Kenner and then playing with the toys and having that whole toy line to inspire my imagination. So, um, you know, back then it was, Star Wars was so, it's still huge now, but like back then it was such a unique uh, juggernaut of a, of a pop culture thing. You know, nowadays we've got the Avengers, we've got all these other franchises, you know, Marvel, DC, and there's all these different things that are kind of vying for your attention and popularity, but star Wars back then, it was sort of like, you know, that was really it in terms of anything big like that. So it definitely made a huge impression on me and it, it just inspired me to eventually become an artist um, and to want to draw. And I just carried that inspiration with me all through grade school and high school and up until art school. That's that's great. I, I remember visibly, and I'm, and I'm sure when I say this, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. But I remember in the, in the late 70s going to Burger King and seeing those Star Wars glasses mm-hmm. and, the, and those images. Um, I still have the original glasses in my studio right now. I'm looking oh, at them because they're just they're beautiful. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, stuff yeah. like that. And, you know, and then now you're creating things that could um, you know, very easily show up anywhere in uh, on a Star Wars item. Uh, the collaborative process of creating in the Star Wars universe, what is that like for you? I mean, obviously it helped to inspire you as an artist and a creator, but what is it like to know that you're a part of this amazing universe? Um, you know, I never take it for granted. I mean, I, I, I love it so much. So every time a project comes along or I get the chance to contribute or submit uh, artwork for anything Star Wars related, um, official. It, it, yeah, I mean, it, it's like, it's always a dream come true. Like, I remember the very first time I got my first Star Wars official project in 1996, um, doing some artwork for the role playing game, uh, for Weston Games. So this was oh, yeah. long before the, the, the new, newer role playing game, which I ended up illustrating for that years later too. But, this was for the original Star Wars role playing game in 1996. Prior to the special editions, there wasn't a lot of Star Wars content out there, and um, so I remember getting that first phone call when I submitted a portfolio, and it was like, granted, you know, I look back, it was like, yeah, it was just some pen and ink illustrations for a gaming supplement book that you know no one, a lot of people didn't even really buy, but for me, knowing that this was these were drawings that were going to be approved by Lucasfilm. They were going to be published in a star Wars book. I mean, uh, my, you know, when I got that phone call, my knees were shaking. I was so excited. It was like a dream come true. Uh, it was a goal of mine to do star Wars art, even though it wasn't really super popular anymore. Again, this is just prior to the special editions when star Wars yeah. exploded all over again, but I had still been a lifelong fan. You know, I carried that with me, you know, even when Star Wars wasn't popular, I was still, you know, reading everything I could get and buying everything I could buy and drawing it all the time. So it was always my goal to to do something Star Wars related, hopefully. And then I got that opportunity. And even to this day, it's still every time I get a project, it's, it's, it is like a dream job. It's a dream project. You know, it's always exciting. And I feel that same kind of thrill just like I did 20 years ago. Oh, yeah. 
Oh yeah, this this uh, we're roughly about the same age age bracket, so we have similar memories and recollections. So those mid nineties, mm-hmm. you basically had the the Hasbro Power of the Force two line that started to come out. The action figures, yeah, yeah. You had Timothy Zahn's books starting to come out, and then you had the the role playing games, Western role playing games, which had a big influence on a guy named Pablo Hidalgo too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So pretty pretty cool. So you obviously have been working on Star Wars and in. in and enjoying stars for a very long time. Um, and you must have like certain scenes, moments or characters that you resonate with more than others. Are, are there certain ones of, of those scenes, characters and moments that are among your very favorite to work on? Well, I mean, definitely certain characters um, because as a kid, when I first saw the first star Wars film and, and seeing Darth Vader on screen for the first time, there was nothing like that moment or that character i mean granted i was four years old so i didn't realize it was a a guy in a suit i mean i thought it was like this demonic robot thing i mean it just scared me to death and but also at the same time it fascinated me because you know he looked really cool but he was scary but he had a red lightsaber and he was the, the most villainous villain of all time and he pretty much and he really is still is but it just that character like kind of just it scared me but then once i would get the action figures or i started drawing from the marvel comics adaptation actually is kind of really how i started drawing was my mom got me the marvel comics and i would sit there and draw darth vader out of the comics so that was kind of my therapeutic way of dealing with this really scary character you know i'd sit down and try to draw him and 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 in that way i would kind of cope with my my fear of darth vader uh but you know i draw the other characters too but Vader was always a fascinating character to me uh, growing up, uh, just visually dynamic and his, you know, his mysterious background, his origin, which the prequels, you know, really just did, you know, uh, wonderfully with, I mean, that whole story of Anakin Skywalker. So fleshing out, you know, why he became Darth Vader and all, you know, and all that stuff. So uh, to me, Vader has always been like my favorite character as a fan but also as an illustrator to work with just because he's he's so fun as a creator to work with and as an illustrator to draw and paint uh a second favorite would be boba fett just because he's he was always that cool anti-hero character and he was even more mysterious you know granted this is before the prequel so growing up right as a star wars fan with boba fett i mean he was like i mean the now coolest. he's just demystified and yeah, yeah. yeah. so it, it, it's but you got to remember like for guys like us growing up as Star Wars fans Vader and Fett were so mysterious you know and it was like you know we would have endless you know uh, as kids you know I would have you know debates with my friends and we you know make up stories about these characters and even over the years prior to the prequels you know you would be like okay, you know, you get little pieces of information here and there and and try to put together the, the enigma of these characters. But it, so yeah, Vet to me was a second favorite because he's also really visually dynamic, but in a different way. Like he's more detailed in a way than Vader. Vader's more graphic and blacks and, and high contrast and Vet is way more detail oriented. So that makes him fun to paint and illustrate for me also because I like details as much as I like graphic art. So it's kind of those two characters have always been my go-to characters. Oh, that's great. And then the, just like the ribbing and everything on Vader's suit and the detail on the helmet, it's, oh, yeah, it's yeah. gotta be, it's gotta be challenging. So when you, when you're looking at other people create a Vader too, do you learn sort of from what uh, different things that they do as well? Or how does that even work uh, when you're admiring your peers? Um, I mean, in terms of uh, how I illustrate these characters, I mean, I try to stay very faithful to how they're portrayed in the films. Uh, so stylization is, to a certain extent, comes more through technique as opposed to, you know, taking any liberties with the costumes or the likenesses or anything like sure. that. Um, so usually when I'm looking at other friends' artwork, my, uh, my peers and my friends, I'm usually looking more at technique than how, you know, how they necessarily draw Darth Vader's 
space, which has a lot of curves in it and can be really complex. Um, and just in general, his costume is, you know, lots of organic curves and stuff. Um, and, but yeah, it's very mechanical as well. So it, it can get kind of complex. Um, but yeah, I mean, usually I'm looking at photo reference of these characters and, and then that's kind of what, what guides me on how to illustrate them uh, or how to represent them. But then the technique is sort of like, I'm always kind of looking at different techniques, um, from my friend to do like, you know, anywhere from comic book art style to fully painted style or more of a graphic design style. So that's kind of where I get my inspiration from to kind of incorporate, you know, with different concepts or different ideas for different illustrations. Um, yeah, that's neat. Uh, and I, and I can only speak of course from the, from the position of a writer or a podcaster, but it's true. You, you, there's like something there that's built into the character or the core of this mythology and then you bring your passion and your talents in how you create into the world, and it creates uh, a dynamic in result. Uh, speaking of that, we're going to take a quick break. But when we come back, I will talk with Joe about Celebration Chicago and what we might be able to expect from this exciting experience coming in April. This is Coffee with Kenobi. This is Coffee with Kenobi. Oh, pass the cream, would you? I'd like to thank our CWK Patreon contributors, Rebecca Raven, Dennis Keithley, Terry Lee, Ben Elkington, Melinda Wolf, Aaron Harris, Chris Kavarka, Angela Sauce, Mediocre Jedi, Amy Mulder, Jim Capron, Yancey Evans, Caroline Maselli, Tim Bungaroth, Chris Metz, LJ Souter, Thea Selby, Jeff Ellis, Daz Davies, Christian Dale, Jason Hall, Brian McKinney, Connie Shee, Jared Cantor, BJ Smith, Eric Struthers, Nick Deco, and Mark Suter on CWK Prover. Your monthly contributions help this show expand and grow in so many ways, which we really appreciate. And you get something back in the process as well. Every Sunday, we release CWK Prover, which is our exclusive show hosted by myself, Coffee with Kenobi co creator Corey Club, and our CWK newsman, Tom Gross. We talk about popular culture, Star Wars topics, superheroes, films. The Super Bowl, the Oscars, heck, anything that's going on in the world of popular culture, we address it, and we do it in a conversational style that will definitely make you think and laugh, like Coffee with Kenobi, but even in an even different way that I think you'll really enjoy. Here is a clip from a recent CWK pour-over. Someone asked me that recently, or not that recently, but I remember someone talking to me about it. I know it was my son. So, no, I don't really ever think about that. I, I like my fiction to be fictional because it's huh. fun to explore. Um, of course, everyone wants to think they'd be a Jedi Knight or a Resistance. But let's be honest, that's a lot of work. Mm. Well, it's interesting. You, was, you mentioned you said <laughs> I would be dead. And it's mm-hmm. interesting you think of that that way. Like a well, I said, I'm not a survivor. Right. I, could, I could, you know, you put me out in like the woods or something, I'd be, I'd be screwed. But, but I'm saying like, but I, you, you saw that, <laughs> instantly thought of, of you being trapped on some planet and not being able to get off. But yeah. to you maybe, that's just a way of life. What if you were lived on a, a flourishing planet that has cities and walkways and, and you know, Like Alderaan. Why the sun's really bright today, Daddy? Whoops. Yeah, right. Oh. Oh, yeah. no, that's not good. Too soon. Too soon. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'd, I'd like in like, would you want to live in Gotham City? No. Same reason. I no probably way. would be yeah. dead. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. I, well, knowing the history of it, sure. I want to learn. Maybe, maybe uh, Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory, I guess. Ooh. Oh man, I would, I would have, uh, I would, <laughs> if I were in the Star Wars universe, man, I'd, I'd love to be a assistant librarian with Jocasta New, man. Oh, one hundred percent, I'd do it. Except I'd when it. Vader hunts her down in the Vader series. Oh, that's true. And again, that is only for five dollars a month. You will have access to forty-five different coffee with Kenobi CWK Pro's. You can also get T-shirts, coffee mugs, and access to CWK Lens, which is a video slash well think of it again like snapchat or instagram story where i can put pictures or videos up the more things you want to see the more things you want us to talk about let us know and we'll be sure to include it on our cwk patreon coverage and if you can think of incentives you know if you're on the fence you want to help coffee with kenobi you want to support us through patreon but you're not sure what is that thing that will put you over the top let us know we'd be happy to consider it and who knows maybe you'll join me someday 
on the CWK pour over. So just let us know if you have any questions or you want to find out more. Otherwise, we will save a spot for you at www.patreon.com slash coffee with Kenobi. When you're a Star Wars collector, be it comics, books, or toys, it can be hard to keep track of everything that you have. Gemmer is a free app for collectors that helps you solve that problem. You can join their Star Wars community, easily catalog your collection, and show off all of your amazing stuff to a community of fellow fans. Just search for Gemmer, that's G-E-M-R, in the app and Play Stores now, and check it out. One Nation Coffee is the official brew of coffee with Kenobi. It smells amazing and tastes even better. I just got my brand new coffee subscription today, and my wife and I were very excited because we know it is truly the best. And all you need to do is go to www.onenationcoffee.com and enter the code KENOBI10 to get 10% off your first order. We are back, and we are here with Joe Caroni, of course, who is talking to us about the creative process and all the amazing things you've done for Star Wars. I highly recommend that everyone go to Joe's website. It's just joecaroni.com, right? Yep, that's it, joecaroni.com. Yeah, I mean, you've got Star Wars, Star Trek, X-Files, Doctor Who, True Blood, just a whole bunch of amazing stuff out there. Uh, just marvelous. And that's probably just sort of the, the tip of the iceberg of what we can expect from Celebration Chicago. What What is the Celebration Chicago art experience like? Um, it's actually really, uh, really fun and, and kind of unique and very exciting. Uh, they basically, um, a select number of artists get to uh, appear at the event and uh, many of them will have uh, license exclusive prints that you can only get at celebration, which you buy directly from the artist, or you can pre-order directly from them. Uh, like for example, my, my star Wars, uh, illustration partner, Brian Miller, who will be doing the show together in, uh, celebration Chicago. Um, he'll have an exclusive print available for the event, which you can actually pre-order and then, um, pick it up at the event. And it hasn't been revealed yet, but you'll have to stay tuned to StarWars.com because they'll be revealing all the original uh, exclusive art pieces uh, for the event, I think, in the next week or two. Um, and then the pre-orders will go up. Um, I'm going to have lots of brand new Star Wars art, uh, including original paintings, and some hand-embellished paintings, uh, sketch covers, uh, uh, lots of prints and, and other things, too. So... Um, so yeah, definitely swing by our booth, and I think it's thirty-one sixteen is the booth number, and it's going to be you can really. I don't think you can, you can miss us. I think when you walk in the main entrance of Celebration, we're going to be like right up front. Um, our booth will be right there at the main entrance when you walk in. So uh, we're excited to see everyone there soon. But yeah, the the art show, the the whole art experience of Celebration, it's going to be. Yeah, I guarantee it's just going to be, it's always like a really good time and all of us are really good friends. So we always have a great time and we have a great time with fans there too. So hopefully all the Star Wars Celebration fans will swing by our booths and they'll go check out the uh, the art show and some of us will be scattered throughout the, the main exhibition floor. We'll have our own booth. So hopefully everyone will be able to find us and see all the uh, amazing Star Wars art that we'll have for sale. Yeah, there is a ton of it in going from celebrations past. I know that when you go there, this is such a cool thing because you're like at an art gallery, but it's it's Star Wars art, so it's the best kind, right? right? And then not only yeah. do you get to <laughs> enjoy, yeah, you get to enjoy yeah. it. You get to talk to the creators right there, talk to them about right. uh, their work, and I think it's such a really cool, unique experience. You don't really find that in a lot of different environments, so this yeah. is a really great thing. Yeah, it's different. I mean, it's kind of like, I mean, anyone that's been to Comic-Con or Comic-Con San Diego or any mm -hmm. kind of Comic-Con in their local state or city that um, if they've had like an artist section or an artist alley, it's similar to that. Um, only because this is Star Wars Celebration, I mean, it, it's primarily geared to just Star Wars art. So you're going, I mean, granted, I'll have some other things there besides Star Wars art. The majority of my work will be Star Wars, but like you mentioned, I've worked on other properties from Star Trek to Farscape and G.I. Joe and X-Files and all that stuff. So, I mean, I'll have other stuff there too, but 
it's really when you go to celebration and you see the Star Wars art show or you see all the different Star Wars artist booths, um, it is like it's it's just Star Wars art heaven, basically. And all the Star Wars artists are, I mean, I can almost speak for all of them because I know most of them and they're all really cool people. So it's 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 fun to be able to talk with these artists and painters and illustrators about, you know, their artwork and yeah, I mean, as a, I'm a fan too, so I, I love going and seeing everyone else's artwork and getting caught up with all my friends and stuff. Do you, uh, as a fan, are there ever times you're like, boy, is it, it's probably hard to kind of sneak out and walk around the convention floor because you're you're very much in demand for those five days. How how do you kind of balance that? It's, yeah, it's challenging. yeah, yeah. Right, right. So all of my catch up is usually after the show when when you know the show finally dies down because every celebration just gets bigger and bigger and it's always like a whirlwind. So like you hit the ground running on Thursday and then Thursday morning and it just does not stop. So I mean, and it's not just like that for me. I think everyone, anyone that's a vendor there, any artist that is selling anything or any exhibitor that's working at that show it's it, it, it's it's intense so i don't really get much free time from the booth um but that's okay because i'm there to you know sell artwork sign sign artwork i'm there to meet fans i'm there you know to promote my work so even though i'm there working i'm still having a blast especially when the fans are you know, crowding the booth and, you know, getting to meet all these people. So usually, yeah, at the end of the day, when the show's over, that's when everyone spills out into the hotels and goes to all the parties. That's when you catch up with your friends usually. But, um, but yeah, no, I, I, I don't ever complain because as no. a lifelong Star Wars fan, I'm, I'm in heaven every day. Even I remember. I'm nonstop. <laughs> no, it's, it's true. It's true. I, I totally understand that. Uh, covering the convention uh, for the past couple of years, I remember the first time we covered it for coffee with Kenobi and I remember uh, oh, probably about six or seven hours went by and I looked at Corey when he was, you know, co-hosting the show with me and I said, I haven't gone to the bathroom all day. I haven't eaten anything yeah, all day. Yeah. We need to take <laughs> care know, of that. I, yeah. Because I remember things get away like from you. That yeah. is so true. Yep. I have gone an entire day, uh, right. From like 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. until six or seven. And it's like, wait, I didn't even go to the bathroom all day because it's so, yeah. you're, you're not kidding. That's a, yeah, because it's so intense, that, and especially when you're behind the booth and you're dealing with yeah. crowds of people nonstop. So you just, and then you just hit that wall and then you just collapse basically at the end of the day and then you wake up and do it all over again the next day. So yeah, it's That's intense. Right. Oh, it is. It's it's great. As is, I'm sure, the... the uh the opportunity to have your work on display at celebration. So what is the application process like, you know, as far as whatever you're allowed or comfortable sharing with uh, our sure. Kenobi audience listeners, because, you know, well, I know for the podcast stage, everyone knows you go on to the celebration website, there's an application, you fill out a number of questions and put in some information right. and then you, you hope for the best. You hope that the force is with you. Uh, what is it right. like for you guys as, <laughs> as artists? And it's pretty much the same exact thing. And and for us, it's almost the same process. I mean, celebration website updates and they, we kind of know we get a heads up, like when things are going to go live and when they're going to announce the application process, but it's kind of twofold for, for guys like, like me and Brian Miller, because we're not only entering the art, show but we're also applying for our own booth sure so we have to go through that application process as well um but basically yeah i mean you submit your concepts um your art pieces that i uh, um that you're hoping to uh get approved then lucasfilm uh, you know there's a deadline for that and then they get back to you a few months later it's like a it's like a blind judging process basically and um you don't know who the judges are you just know that it's artwork gets sent to lucasfilm and they have their panel of judges that look over all the different and they get hundreds of submissions so um getting into the art show is is never a, a given necessarily but um that out of all those hundreds and hundreds of submissions they pick so many of the pieces that they would like to see uh completed 
as as final artwork, which will then become limited edition exclusives that you can actually, you know, for fans that fans can buy at the show. So there, there's only because celebration is only so big. I mean, I think they usually limit it to like I don't know, like 30 or 40 artists every year, um, somewhere in there. Um, but then some of like like I said, some of us get our own booths as exhibitors and vendors outside of the art show because like in my case for example i've been doing this a long time so i have a lot of star wars art um so does brian miller and some of my other friends that are going as well so we kind of need more space than what the art show can offer um that said i recommend everyone go to the art show because it'll be its own little artist alley area like you said it's like an art gallery so people can walk through and they can see all the wonderful Star Wars art on display, and then they can, you know, they can buy certain posters or prints, and then the rest of us will kind of be scattered around the event floor with our with our our larger booths, basically, where we'll hopefully have even more Star Wars art on display for everyone. So it's great, it's so great. Oh man, just talking to you, Joe, is getting me even more excited. I didn't even think that was <laughs> possible. But we we do have a, a yeah, quite a yeah. few listeners who have, who have never been to a celebration. You've been to just about all of them. So yeah, what, kind of, yeah. what kind of tips do you have for, uh, for first timers <laughs> or, or people who just want to get another sort of another perspective on it? Um, tips. Wow. That's, that's a good question. I mean, there's, I would say prepare to stand in line. Um, even as an exhibitor, like every morning, it seems like you'll want to get there early um in order because they you know with security checks and they take security very seriously so that can sometimes take a process of just kind of like getting into the event center and i i i know the mccormick place really well because i've been doing c2e2 which is another large comic con yeah which is held at that same exact exact facility so i've been doing c2e2 for like the past five or six years so i know that I know the McCormick place very well. Um, so, I mean, I could give your listeners all kinds of tips about like what's around, where's a good place to eat and all that stuff. Sure. But, um, bas- but basically, um, yeah, I mean, get there early, prepare to spend time in line, whether you're just trying to get in or whether you're in line for your favorite celebrity or if you're in line for an exclusive, I mean, use the buddy system, you know, give your friend money and say, hey, go grab this exclusive for me. I'll go get this one for you. And it's all about teamwork. Um, you know, I I would say stay hydrated because it is it's like you're on your feet all day pretty much. So you'll want to, you know, always have water with you. But um, yeah, I mean, there's there's just so much to see and there'll be so much to do. It's just, it's going to be, it's intense. The crowds are, there's going to be a lot of people there and Star Wars is not going anywhere. And the fans just get bigger and bigger and the the event gets bigger every year. The crowds get bigger. So like, yeah, just be prepared for lots of crowds and lots of people and, yeah, I mean it's it's it sounds intimidating, but it's it's also just so much fun because if you love Star Wars, this is this is like the Super Bowl of Star Wars basically. And yeah, you, it just you couldn't you couldn't ask for a more better time if you're a Star Wars fan. Totally agree. That and you mentioned McCormick Place. I've been there a number of times myself because it's not that it's not that far away from where I live, and it's uh it's it's a huge place. I know a lot of people were uh, yeah. Not crazy about Celebration Orlando and how that was kind of laid out. I think they'll be much happier with McCormick Place. Well, McCormick, it's it's definitely a different kind of animal because it's not that area of Chicago is uh, the McCormick Place is kind of in an isolated little pocket in yeah. the south loop of Chicago. So there's not it's not like going to Orlando where you can just kind of walk anywhere and there's all kinds of restaurants and things to do and amusement parks. It's, it's going to be way different. So when you go, granted McCormick is huge, like that facility is very big. Um, I think it's one of the biggest in the country. I believe um, so. Yeah. yeah. So there's going to be a lot of room to get around, but at the same time, it's going to be, I think it's going to feel a little more isolated. Like I think you have to go, you have to walk or drive a mile um, into, into downtown to really get to any of the, you know, any of the, uh, if you want like more variety of restaurants or, or whatever other fun things to do after the event. But um, 
definitely plan on Ubering, plan on yes. uh, walking, <laughs> you know, quite a bit. But uh, if you stay on site, I mean, there's a, there's a handful of really nice hotels right there with nice restaurants. So it's not like, it's not going to be like that isolated, but, you know, usually I you have to like take an Uber into downtown and if you want to grab like a Giordano's pizza, which I highly recommend. Yes. Uh, Chinatown, which is only like a few blocks away. Um, oh, there's some really great restaurants over there. I'm not going to tell your listeners. I don't want to give it away because it'll it's a really small restaurant and it'll totally get crowded. So, <laughs> but uh, de- definitely, uh, <laughs> I'm going to keep that secret to myself. But yeah, um, you, you de- tell me off the air. Definitely, uh, definitely explore around the area if you can, or do some research before you go, just so you know, like what's in walking distance, what's in Ubering distance, because. Uh, yeah, it'll be uh, it's a little different than being in Orlando. It's going to have a different vibe, a different feel. But I imagine it's going to be just as big, if not bigger, than Orlando because, uh, like I said, celebration gets bigger every year. I don't know how, but it just somehow keeps growing, and more and more people keep coming. So it's pretty great. And the Cubs will be in town, so you can't beat them. Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Joe, thank you so much for coming on Coffee with Kenobi and talking about the Celebration Art Show and your work and and just no, no helping problem. us to get more and more excited about this awesome event, April 11th to the 15th. Where can people reach out to you if they want to ask you a question or just say hello, and where can they find sure. your artwork? Well, um, first of all, just a, a reminder, so you'll be able to find me and uh, fellow Star Wars artist Brian Miller at our booth at Star Wars Celebration, it'll be booth uh, 3116. So you can't miss us, right? When you walk in the main entrance, we're going to be, our booth is uh, right up near the front right there. So definitely stop on by. Uh, People want to reach out. I'm pretty easy to find on social media. Just, you know, you can get a hold of me through my website at joecrony.com or you can look me up as Joe Crony on Facebook. Um, Also, um, yeah, yeah, Instagram, Facebook, all that jazz, Twitter. yeah, and uh, feel free to reach out, and hopefully uh, we'll generate some uh, excitement and interest for our new Star Wars artwork. That will be if you if you follow us online, we'll be Brian and I will be revealing stuff shortly. Some brand new artworks, new paintings, uh, his exclusive print. So definitely uh, feel free to follow us online. Cannot wait, Joe. Thanks again so much for being on Coffee with Kenobi. Cool. Thanks, Dan. I appreciate it. Greetings. This is Obi-Wan Kenobi, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi. For most of us, enjoying Star Wars isn't a hobby. It is a lifestyle. If you're a Star Wars fan, there's a good chance you're also a collector. Be it toys, books, comics, or clothes. But how do you keep up with all the announcements and make sure that you get all the things you want? How do you keep track of what you have and... How do you show off your awesome collection to people who are as passionate as you? That is where Gemmer comes in. It is the best app for organizing and displaying your collections, connecting with other Star Wars fans, and discussing all things happening a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Download the app for free by searching for Gemmer, that's G-E-M-R, in the app or Play Stores now, and join their Star Wars club today. MEI and Mouse Fan Travel is... The travel agency you wouldn't use when you are going to go to Celebration Chicago or the Disney theme park for the cruise lines. They have signature service, which is awesome. I cannot recommend it enough. I use them for everything for the show and for my family now, too, because they're the best. They have expert advice to help clients maximize their vacation time and dollar. Check out www.milesfantravel.com today and let them know Coffee with Kenobi sent you. We are back, and it is time for the news, and yes, I am a broken record, but Tom, what can I say? I mean, there is going to be so much celebration news each and every week. Mark Von Olin teased this on Twitter that he had more announcements for celebrity guests at Celebration, and we have got one cool customer coming our way to Chicago, don't we? Oh, we sure do. Now, it's been a busy week, as you mentioned, Dan, where J.J. Abrams announced on Twitter that the filming of Episode Nine wrapped up, and he included that stunning photo, an emotional picture of John Boyega, Daisy Ridley, and Oscar Isaac in an embrace. Oh, and then, as you mentioned, the Star Wars Celebration guest announcements, official lightsaber fighting, and more. So let's kick it off with news 
Uh, let's kick off the news, rather, with the most recent guest announcements in Star Wars Celebration Chicago. And oh, yes, Billy D. Williams will be bringing some of that smooth to Chicago. What as have he returns. we here? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Everybody's listening and doing the same thing. So. <laughs> I know, right? And, and he'll be returning to Celebration once again this year. Then how about a group of Imperials with Anthony Forrest, who played that stormtrooper who was Jedi mind-tricked by Obi-Wan Kenobi? Then we've got Julian Glover and Michael Culver, who played General Veers and Captain Nida. Also in this announcement, are a couple of rebels as the voices of Ezra Bridger and Kanan Jarrus, played by Taylor Gray and Freddie Prinze Jr., will be in attendance. John Morton, who played Luke Skywalker's Snowspeeder co-pilot, Dak, and Alan oh, Tudyk, who is the snappy Imperial turned rebel droid K2SO. The names keep coming. The excitement keeps growing. How do you like these names? I like these names very much. John Morton, of course, was uh, our guest on the Celebration stage at Celebration Anaheim back in 2015. Mm. He was not at Celebration Orlando, so I'm thrilled that he's going to be back. He is such a neat guy. I cannot wait to introduce you to him. He is, he is a gentleman and a scholar. Super cool. And, of course, Freddie, Taylor, all these guys, Billy Dee. I mean, this is a great cast. I mean, we're just getting more and more. Uh, I will Alan Tudyk. We got our picture with Alan Tudyk and Felicity Jones at the last one, uh, recording yes, myself, right. uh, Dave Motters, and, and Aaron Harris, the ho- co-hosts of Resistance Reactions. So I'm ecstatic. And, and you know, as this goes along, I mean, it's no secret that I'm hoping they're going to say Mark Camel because it seems more and more important to me to get a chance to meet Mark Camel. So, I mean, even if I have to pay to do it, it's worth it, I think. That's still the yeah. one I'm holding out for. But these are great. These are fantastic uh, pieces of news. They have... An incredible array of guests. I am so excited for you. I think I'm as excited to see it through your eyes as I am anything. (laughs) I just hope I don't freeze. I've said that so many times. So I'm prepping myself. I'm just getting used to it. And oh, this this list is great. And as you mentioned, I can't wait to meet John Morton, who uh, I sort of uh, indirectly met when he uh, worked with your class right. a few years ago That's right. and then of course uh freddie prince jr oh boy that'll mm. be fun if, if i have that opportunity and i know taylor gray has been on the show as well so what a great 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 list moving on to our next story lots of star wars toy news came out of the 2019 toy fair last weekend but disney and lucasfilm took advantage of the excitement to announce its next installment to force friday with Triple Force Friday. Flip your calendars a few months into the future and use a pen to mark October 4th. This is the day that we will catch the debut of brand new products inspired by three of the year's biggest Star Wars releases, including Star Wars Episode Nine, the live action series The Mandalorian, and the latest video game from EA and Respawn, Jedi Fallen Order. This day, toys, collectibles, housewares, books, apparel, and more will go on sale at 12.01 a.m. October 4th. And as in the past, stores around the world will take part in all of the excitement. So Triple Force Friday, I got the news about this. Uh, I think it was Friday morning, Corey texted us and said, hey, did you guys see that email from Lucasfilm? (laughs) They send it about 4.30 in the morning central time. So I jumped on and, and helped. Uh, get the press release up and i'm excited because you know force friday is such a coffee with kenobi tradition yes you've been there since the beginning in 2015 when they had the first one of course for force friday for rogue one i got to be in that target commercial yeah so it's always going to be very very special to me but now we're going to get to see action figures and accessories and play things and and board games and t-shirts and who knows what else from not only episode nine but the mandalorian and this new EA Star Wars video game. This is going to be great, and we don't have to worry about trying to figure out if any participating local stores are going to participate because this is going to be a huge launch in Coffee with Kenobi. It's going to bring you all the greatest details and stuff from Instagram and Twitter and all kinds of stuff. But really, it is February, and we're talking about, what, eight months away? I know, <laughs> I know right? Yeah. Oh, how exciting. Oh my gosh. Those, 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 uh, sleepless nights, or I don't know if it's sleepless or just short on sleep nights, but oh, are they worth it? So much fun. And like you said, the tradition and I uh, can't wait for that to happen. 
And uh, just a quick little tidbit here to, to uh, cap off the news. Um, now, you know the name Zorro and Robin Hood and the Three Musketeers uh, have always inspired the, the art of fencing. Well, the French Federation of uh, Fencing or the Fencing Federation of France has now declared that um, – lightsaber dueling will be part of the competitive sports. So now add Luke Skywalker, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Darth Vader to the ranks of inspiration of new sword fighters. Is this crazy or what? Oh, I, it's so like out there, but how fun is that? I think oh, it's so cool. neat. I, can't, I haven't shown my wife yet, but I can't wait to see the look on her face. But so basically I can legitimately say, I'm going to do, I'm going to go to lightsaber training. It's going to happen. I love it. Yeah. I, think I think it's so much fun. Um, it put a smile on my face when I saw that Lisa put on our coffee with Kenobi Twitter. And it's going to create some interesting buzz. I mean, there already is the Saber Guild that does some of these amazing breathtaking demonstrations. Imagine some of these fine folks will get a chance to maybe compete for a medal someday. I hope this really catches on because I think it's pretty great. I do too. Fun, fun. Fun, fun. Lots of fun. Well, hey, Tom, thank you so much. We're going to go ahead and take another break. When we come back, bonus Mason Z is back for the second week in a row, and he's going to talk this time about Attack of the Clones. This is Coffee with Kenobi. Coffee, tea, or me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. It's Coffee with Kenobi. Finding a place where you can be as passionate as we are about Star Wars can be tricky. But there's an app called Gemmer that was built just for collectors and fans to come together and hang out. Jimmer makes it easy to connect with people who care as much as you do in their Star Wars club. You can find the Jimmer app, that's G-E-M-R, in the app and play stores for free. Check it out today. One Nation Coffee is the official brew of coffee with Kenobi. I start my morning every day with One Nation Coffee because it is the best. You can start your coffee subscription so you never miss out on the best coffee in the galaxy by going to www.onenationcoffee.com today. Plus, enter the code Kenobi10 to set up a coffee subscription and save 10% off your first order. We are back, and much sooner than I had originally anticipated, Mason Z has returned to coffee with Kenobi because, well, I just couldn't wait any longer, and neither could he. We watched Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones, so... That means, Mason Z, the microphone is yours. Welcome back to the show, by the way. Thank you. You are so welcome. It's always great to have you, of course. What do you like doing about these little exciting things that we do together? When I see a new movie, I want, um, go on the podcast. That's right. Do What do your friends and your teachers think about this? Wait a second. I need to tell them something. Okay. I need to tell you, he said I would watch this movie when I'm six, but I'm still five. That's right. So why do you think I decided early to let you watch it? It was my idea. That's true. It was a very good idea. I think uh, we are pretty good with these five films. So now, before we get into Attack of the Clones, you've, of course, seen Star Wars New Hope, right? The Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, he's counting on his fingers, the Phantom Menace, and now Attack of the Clones. So overall, what did you think of Attack of the Clones? It was really good. Yeah, was it better than you thought, or it is good? Better. Really? I am glad to hear that. Tell me why you thought it was better, although I think I have a good idea. Tell me. Well, I think you liked seeing the Jedi. I liked when Yoda caught the lightning from Count Dooku. Were you surprised by that? Amazing, yes. It was amazing, yes. So, of course, what Mason is referring to is the exciting ending to Attack of the Clones where Count Dooku and Yoda face off and the Sith Lightning comes flying at Yoda. And I think uh, it was set up in such a way that we were going to be a little more worried about Yoda getting hit by the Lightning because of how the Lightning affected Anakin Skywalker. How did it affect Anakin and then how did it affect Obi-Wan? I don't know. Do you remember what happened when it hit Anakin? He broke his arm. Oh, that was a little bit later. When it first hits Anakin, he falls down. Remember, and Obi-Wan has to, to go, and you said, is anyone going to help him? Remember that? Oh, yeah. Well, you, you were a little worried about Obi-Wan, weren't you? Yeah. Because Count Dooku is pretty... Strong. He's very strong with the Force. And w- what did you think about his lightsaber? 
I thought it was cool. Yeah? What did you notice about how it looked? Uh, it was bent. It was bent. Why do you think that they did that? I don't know. It was kind of interesting. I can see it in my office. Do you see it up there? Right next to that old Luke Skywalker. See that? Yeah. Pretty cool. We can look at it later if you want to. Why is it bent? Do you know? I think it's just supposed to be a cool design because he is... He thinks of himself as a little more fancy and sophisticated, so that's a little more fancy of a lightsaber handle. Does that make any sense? How didn't they make it like that? I think it's something they made in the prop shop where they make the designs of the lightsaber hilts. What's a prop shop? A prop shop is a place where they make the ships and the vehicles and the blasters and the lightsabers so that when they film the movie, they can give them to the actors who play in the movie. I get it. Yeah, I thought you might. So let's get back to the movie, shall we? Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you want to tell us now if it's your favorite movie, or do you want to save it till the end? Save it till the end. Okay, that seems like a good idea. So early on, Padme comes back to Coruscant, and she gets to see Anakin again, who she hasn't seen in 10 years. What's different about Anakin now versus when you saw him in Phantom Menace? He's 18. That's right. I said he was about eight in Phantom Menace. And I said it's been ten years. So you told me in the car, oh, he's got to be eighteen then, which is pretty good math. So what was how was Anakin like as far as his personality? How does he act different or look different? Cause he was angry sometimes. Yeah, and wasn't he a little bit taller? Yeah, a billion taller. A billion taller. How would you describe his relationship with Obi Wan Kenobi? He was mad. He was mad. Do you think he and Obi Wan get along pretty good? Not that much. Oh, really? Why do you say that? Because he said, remember when he said, he doesn't let me do some stuff? Oh, that's right. He was frustrated sometimes, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. Yeah, but then there are other times when he said he was like a father to him. What does that mean? It means like he tells him what to do all the time. Oh, is that what I do to you? No. (laughs) I think it also means, doesn't it, that... He loves him and he thinks of him as someone very important that that helps him to be a better person. Maybe. Just like your mom and dad do with you. Yes. So Anakin and Obi-Wan are there. And then there was a really exciting scene. I remember when I saw this and there was that scene where there was those little poisony worm things. And Anakin and Obi-Wan race into the room where Padme is sleeping and Anakin uses his lightsaber. And what is Obi-Wan doing? What did you think of that? He jumped onto that droid. So when he crashes through the window and he holds onto that droid, there's this huge, exciting action sequence. Tell me about that. It was really cool how Anakin jumped into his ship fast. Anakin falls on top of Zam Wessel's speeder, but he holds on, probably using the force, and then he uses a lightsaber to try to get her to stop flying. So Anakin's lightsaber goes flying in the air into, into almost into space, and what happens? Obi-Wan catches it. That's right, which was really cool. And then we find out that Obi-Wan has to go investigate who this bounty hunter is, and then Anakin is going to guard Padme and keep her safe back on Naboo. Yeah, and the bounty hunter is Count Dooku and Jango Fett. Jango Fett. We finally got to see Jango Fett. What was he like? He was so cool. What did you like about him? I like how Obi-Wan fought against him. That was a cool scene because you got to see a Jedi Knight against a bounty hunter, didn't you? The bounty hunter almost won. I know. Tell me about the fight. If you were going to tell your friends at school about the face-off between Obi-Wan and Jango Fett, what would you tell them? I would tell them um, that he let go of his string and Obi-Wan almost fell down, but he caught onto something. I know. It wasn't it cool when Obi-Wan was swinging back and forth on that string and then he does this backflip and lands on the platform? Yeah. Yeah. So did you like seeing him as little, kind of like little like you, or would you rather only see him as big? I'd rather only see him as big. You don't? Or just, we're just not used to seeing him without the armor, I think. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Well, it's definitely a different thing than what most people are used to. But still, it is interesting because we found out something about Boba Fett and Jango Fett and the clones. How are they all related? Because they all look the same. That's right. They're all clones of each other. So why does the Emperor, who's Palpatine in this one, how come he even helps to make a clone army and a droid army? Why does he do that? Because he wants the good guys to think he's good for one, then the bad guy to think he's bad for two. That's right. And then he can cause the Jedi to be all confused and not know what to do. Wow, that was really good. You know, a lot of people have a hard time 
figuring out some of the nuance of that, but you did a really nice job. So I think you probably want to get right to, oh, before we get to the end and the big lightsaber duel and, and the clones and Yoda showing up with the army and stuff, talk about Anakin and Padme. What's different about them in this movie? What happens with them? They get older. So yes, they get older and they fall in love, but before, as they're starting to realize that they get into the Geonosian arena and there are those monsters and Anakin and Padme and Obi-Wan are tied up to those things. What did you think of the part when Anakin said, I came to rescue you and Obi-Wan looks at his chains and he goes, oh, good job. Funny. It was funny because he really didn't rescue him too good if they were, if they were captured. What do you think of those cool monsters in that arena? I thought it was cool. Which one did you think was the neatest? The one that's green. The green one, yeah, that, that Obi-Wan, looks like, it looks kind of like a giant spider, sort of. So then how do they get out of that? Because it looks like they're going to be in trouble because Count Dooku is there. The, all the Jedi's help! And the Jedi's show up, and the Jedi's show up with the clones and Yoda. Tell me about Yoda. He's such a good fighter. Yeah, when what not it a great scene when Obi-Wan and Anakin are both hurt, and it looks like Count Dooku is going to win? And all of a sudden, Yoda comes in, but he walks in really slow with his cane. Why do you think he does that? Because he's old. Yeah, but he, but he sure didn't seem to have a hard time moving around when he was using his lightsaber. Uh, I don't know why. Want me to tell you what I think? What? I think that he was moving slow, so that Count Dooku would think that he was old and he wasn't going to move very fast, and that he would be easy, and then he could trick him. Oh. Pretty good idea, isn't it? Yeah, but he should know it's a force. Well, true, but he but Yoda's more powerful. So at the end, first of all, what did you think of Yoda? You finally got to see Yoda with a lightsaber, and you told me after we watched the movie what you thought. Tell everybody listening to Coffee with Kenobi what you thought about Yoda fighting with his lightsaber. He like I thought he was going to get hit, but he he was so close to getting hit, but he did it because he's so quick and he jumps around. Mm-hmm. He almost reminds me of Spider Man kind of in that part. Why? Because he jumps around and flips and he jumps off of different walls and things like that? Not to me. Not to you? What does it look like to you? Superman. Oh, Superman. That's even better. I, well, Yoda sure seemed like Superman. But then, do you think he could have beat Count Dooku? Yeah. How come they stop fighting? Because he wants to save his friends. That's right. So to me, that means that he is a, a better fighter than Count Dooku. Yeah. So now I want to ask you the question I've been wondering. Every time we see a new movie, you say that one is your favorite. Is that true still? Is Attack of the Clones your favorite or Phantom Menace? I don't know. It's okay to not have this one be your favorite. You can still love it. Uh, they're kind of the same. There, you like them the same? Really? Tell me why. Uh, because they both have really, 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 really cool parts at the end. Yes, the lights here. So what did you like better, the ending with Darth Maul or the ending with Yoda and Count Dooku? Ending with Yoda and Count Dooku. Really? Wow. That's a hard one, isn't it? It was the Clone Wars cartoons. <laughs> Are you excited to watch those? Yeah, and then we'll watch Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, someday. But now we've got five Star Wars movies to watch uh, at different times. Five? Well, we've seen Star Wars, Empire, Jedi, Phantom Menace, and Attack of the Clones, remember? So there are five more? Oh, there are five more, actually. Ten. Five plus five equals ten. That's right. And then in December, the next Christmas, there's going to be episode nine, so there'll be 11 Star Wars movies. Uh, what movie is it called? Right now, it's only called episode nine, and we don't know what it's called just yet. Who does it have in it? It has Finn and Poe and Rey and Kylo Ren. Ooh. Yeah. Does it have Darth Sidious? I don't think it has Darth Sidious. I don't think Darth Sidious is dead by then. Yeah, he's, remember, because this movie is like 30, over 30 years after Return of the Jedi, so it's been a long time. Oh, he's definitely dead. Yeah, I would say so. So do you want to try to rank all the movies again, or do you want to stay with uh, what you said last time? I don't rank all the movies. Okay, tell me all of them in order. So, it's the same... So, Attack of the Clones and, um... Better Menace? Are the same. And then I like, um, Return of the Jedi, uh, The New Hope, and Empire. Oh, good. So, what's the next movie you want to see of the movies you've already seen? Uh, I think Rogue One. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> We're not going to see Rogue One yet for a while. 
Basically, you've seen all the PG Star Wars movies now that I think about it. PG? Mm-hmm. That P- means parental guidance suggested. You PG-13? Have to get, PG-13, you have to be 13 typically to watch it. What about the scene where Anakin and Padme were in that droid factory and they were building all those droids and Anakin was there and he had to keep jumping and so did Padme and they almost kept getting smashed? What did you think of that part? Anakin got hit by one, and then there was a metal arm. Yeah, and it went it went around his arm and he got stuck down there. Yep. How did he get out? I don't know. Did, what did you think of... Uh, oh, his lightsaber gets smashed then too, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. And then did you think that Padme was going to get that lava poured on her? Yeah. You did? How did she get out of it? I did to close it. R2-D2 always saves the day, doesn't he? You always saw R2-D2 do something that he's never done before. What? Fly. Oh, right. What did you think of that? It was cool. You and I actually didn't talk about that part yet because I was making your lunch. Oh. Did you think that part was super neat? Yeah. Yeah, tell me tell me about it. Tell me what you were thinking. It was really cool. Well, is there anything else you want to talk about for Attack of the Clones? No. No? Other pe- Wait, I do have one thing. Okay. I said there's no blaster, but there is in the clones. Yeah, the clones have blasters, it's true. Yeah, they're the only people. So uh, different people like Randy Thurio and other listeners have said that they like hearing you talk about Star Wars and they want you to come on again and talk about other things. I didn't know that. What do you think about that? I think it's fun. Yeah, you think it's fun? Would you like to come back on again? When I watch Revenge of the Sith, yes. What about the books we just talked about? Want to talk about them, too? Yeah. The first book I ever read to you was Darth Vader and Son. Yeah, that's true. What did you think of that book? It was fun, or it could be called Darth Vader and Luke. True, but Luke is his son. It could be son and father, or father and son. True, that's true. Well, hey, Mason, thank you so much for coming back to Coffee with Kenobi. You're welcome. do 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 Listening to Coffee with Kenobi, you are the podcast you're looking for. This is. <laughs> Before we get to email, I want to thank our CWK sponsor, One Nation Coffee and Mouse Fan Travel. Be sure to support them the way they support our podcast and remember to listen to new and archive shows of Coffee with Kenobi wherever you listen to podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Podcast Addict, Stitcher, Spreaker, Overcast, Blog Talk Radio, Player FM, or our website, www.coffeewithkenobi.com, or wherever you enjoy listening to your favorite shows. And if you listen to the show through iTunes, please leave us a review. We are also on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, where you can find some past videos of our CWK Coffee Chat, Pinterest, and Tumblr, and we'd love for you to check us out there. Be sure to listen to our CWK family of shows, too, including Legends Library, Resistance Reactions, Comics with Kenobi, and Lattes with Leia. Please leave a review for each of their shows as well, and be sure to subscribe to each of them individually as they all have their own feeds now. In addition to the places I just mentioned for Coffee with Kenobi, you can find me twice a month on the podcast Looking at Lucasfilm, part of the Jim Hill Media Network, as well as on Twitter at Mr. Zare, M-R-Z-E-H-R, and you can find my writing on CWK's website, as well as StarWars.com, where I'm an official blogger there, and on IGN, where I contribute articles on Star Wars, as well as other popular culture topics. Don't forget to check out www.patreon.com slash coffee with Kenobi to help support the show, as well as get access to CWK Pour Over, which is our podcast, our weekly podcast, not heard anywhere else. There are also t-shirts, coffee mugs, and so many more opportunities and ways for you to not only support the show, we get something pretty cool out of it as well. A big thank you to Joe Caroni, Tom Gross, and Mason Z for joining me today. And I want to thank each and every one of you, as always, for joining us for a cup of coffee. We will be back next week with more Star Wars conversation with some of your favorite Star Wars personalities. This is the podcast you're looking for. Mm-hmm.
This podcast is not endorsed by the Walt Disney Company or Lucasfilm Limited. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. The official Star Wars website can be found at www.starwars.com. Star Wars, all names, sounds, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Disney and their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Coffee with Kenobi unless otherwise indicated. This is the podcast you're looking for. There's no one here.